here I am, just your average 20-year-old with a passion for the adrenaline rush. Skateboarding isn't just a hobby for me, it's a way of life. My days are spent mastering the concrete landscape of our local skate park, a place that's almost a second home. It's here, amidst the grinding of wheels and the shouts of encouragement, that I feel most alive. Today was like any other, with the sun a relentless observer in the clear sky above. The park was alive with the usual crowd, and I was ready to try the trick I'd been obsessing over for weeks. With my board firmly under my feet, I took a deep breath and pushed off, gathering speed and focus. The world narrowed down to the ramp ahead, the wind against my face, and the rhythm of my heart sinking with the wheels rolling beneath me. As I approached the critical moment, time seemed to slow. I launched into the air, my body and board a singular entity, twisting and turning in a dance I'd rehearsed a thousand times in my mind. For a fleeting second, I thought I had it. Then, in a split second, my board betrayed me, slipping away as if it had a mind of its own. I crashed to the ground with a violence that echoed through the entire park. The pain was immediate and all-consuming radiating from what felt like every bone in my body. Through the haze of agony, I could hear the panicked voices of my friends, their faces blurred above me, their words indistinct. The journey to the hospital was a whirlwind of lights and sounds, a chaotic symphony that played to the rhythm of my throbbing pain. The hospital lights were a stark contrast to the sunlit park I'd left behind. The doctor's faces were a blur, their voices a low hum as they talked about fractures, surgeries, and a long road to recovery. As the days passed in a monotonous cycle of medication and fitful sleep, a strange sensation began to overshadow the pain of my broken bones. It was an eerie feeling, as if the bones themselves were moving under my skin, shifting and resettling in ways that bones shouldn't. Night after night, I lay awake hyper-aware of every unnatural creak and groan of my own body. I tried to convince myself it was just the drugs, or my mind playing tricks on me, but in the dead of night, in the solitude of my hospital room, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was very wrong. It was as if something within me had been jarred loose in that fall, something that defied medical explanations, and as I drifted into a restless slumber, plagued by unsettling dreams of twisting limbs and shifting bones, I couldn't help but feel a creeping sense of dread for what the future might hold. Something had changed in me since the accident, something profound and terrifying, and I was afraid that my life, as I knew it, had irrevocably changed along with it. Lying in my own bed for the first time since the accident felt both comforting and alien. The familiar posters on the wall, the view from my window, the softness of my mattress. All these things I'd missed, yet now they seemed strangely distant. My bones ached with a dull, persistent pain, a reminder of the trauma they'd endured. But it was more than physical discomfort. There was a gnawing sensation deep within, as if my very skeleton was restless, discontent with its confinement within my flesh. As days turned into weeks, the odd sensations in my bones intensified. It started with subtle shifts, barely noticeable, like tiny whispers in the marrow. Then came the nights when the whispers grew into murmurs, keeping me awake. I would lie in bed, feeling the eerie sensation of movement under my skin, a macabre dance that left me drenched in sweat and terror. My friends and family noticed the change in me. They attributed it to the trauma of the accident, the pain of recovery but I knew it was something more. I could feel it in the way my bones seemed to pulse with a life of their own, especially as the sky darkened and the world quieted. It was as if they were communicating, plotting in hushed tones a sinister plan unknown to me. One night, as I lay in bed, the feeling became unbearable. The moon cast ghostly shadows across my room, creating an eerie atmosphere that mirrored my inner turmoil. In a desperate attempt to understand, I rolled up my sleeve and watched in horror as the outline of my bones shifted beneath my skin, moving with a will of their own. My heart raced, panic setting in as the reality of my situation became clear. My bones were indeed moving, rearranging themselves in ways that defied nature. 
I rushed to the mirror, my reflection confirming my worst fears. My body looked distorted, my limbs oddly angled, as if my skeleton was trying to escape its fleshly prison. I knew then that I had to seek help, to find someone who would believe the unbelievable. The next day, I visited my doctor, my hands trembling as I recounted the nightly horrors. But as I had feared, he dismissed my claims, chalking them up to the psychological impact of my accident and the pain medication. He recommended a therapist, but I knew no amount of talking would change the horrifying truth. I returned home, feeling more isolated than ever. As the sun set, the dread within me grew. I knew the night would bring more of the terrifying bone movements, the inexplicable shifting that no one else seemed to understand. And as I lay in bed, waiting for the horror to begin anew, I couldn't help but wonder how long I could endure this nightmare. My bones, once the structure that supported me, had become my tormentors, and I was trapped in a body that no longer felt like my own. The once comforting darkness of my room now seemed to close in on me, heavy with foreboding. Each creak of the house, each rustle of leaves outside amplified my anxiety. But nothing was as terrifying as the sensation within me, the feeling of my bones moving, growing, shifting in ways that defied all logic and understanding. It was no longer just at night. The movements became more frequent, more pronounced. I could feel them even during the day, a sinister writhing under my skin that left me gasping for breath. My reflection in the mirror became a source of dread, revealing the grotesque contortions of my limbs, the unnatural angles of my joints. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of blood and fire, the sensation reached a fever pitch. I lay on my bed, my body racked with pain, every bone aching as if on the verge of shattering. The feeling of movement was no longer just a sensation. It was a violent, physical reality. My bones were rebelling, trying to tear themselves from my muscles, my skin, my very being. In a crescendo of agony and terror, I felt my skeleton contort and twist, pushing against my skin from the inside as if seeking an escape. The pain was beyond anything I had ever imagined, a searing, white-hot agony that consumed my every thought. I watched, horrified, as bulges appeared on my arms, my legs, my chest, the outline of my bones pressing outward, straining against the confines of my body. I wanted to scream, to cry for help, but the pain was too intense, silencing any attempt to call out. I was alone, utterly alone in my suffering, witnessing the impossible. The next thing I remember is waking up in a hospital bed, the sterile white of the room a contrast to the dark horrors of the night before. My body was still, the bones no longer moving, but the memory of the pain, the terror, was as vivid as ever. I was told a neighbor had heard my muffled cries and called for help. The doctor spoke of a rare neurological disorder, a phantom sensation caused by the trauma of my skateboarding accident. But deep down, I knew the truth. My skeleton had tried to escape, to break free from me, and I was left with the haunting fear that it might try again. As I lay there, trying to make sense of the impossible, I realized my life had irrevocably changed. I was no longer a skateboard enthusiast. I was a man who had experienced the unthinkable, touched by a horror that defied explanation. And as I stared at the ceiling, I could feel bones start to shift.